Sup gamers, Youth Pastor Alex here, and I have a question for you. What do you guys think is the most Christian game ever made round two? Do you guys still think it's Doom chapter 20 verse 16? Or maybe we should give Dream Daddy another chance. Or it could be Tomb Raider with Laura Cora promoting wide birthing hips. Alex, why did you write that, dude? Dude, that's really problematic. Why would you do that, dude? You're gonna get in trouble, dude. All those games are very Christian. However, we have a new game in the fight, and that game is Doom Eternal. So let's see if the sequel to Doom Chapter 20 verse 16 is enough to make it even more Christian than ever before. To start off, Doom Eternal is a very spiritual sequel that improves on almost everything from Doom Chapter 20 verse 16. The combat has been dialed up past 11, as if we didn't know it could get any more intense than it already was. They even added more diverse environments across multiple planets and dimensions. Is that what I think it is? Well, they'll be damned. They watched my first video. The Doom Slayer now is even quicker than before, but appears to be less powerful. Not in a negative sense, but more in a gameplay balancing sense. You're locked in here with me. I'm not locked in here with you. You'll burn through all your ammo very quickly, and if you don't keep moving, you'll die even quicker. To replenish your ammo, you have your trusty quantum mechanical chainsaw that fills a demon with ammo right before the Slayer cuts him in half. Just like a child would destroy a pinata. As goes for health, you restore it with the almighty glory kills that are more bloodthirsty than ever. Some of which might make you feel like, Oh, I say! Or, <laughs> Yeah. Not only that, Mick Gordon has returned with a new batch of gospel music for praising God while you purge all evil from the solar system. And I gotta tell you, that gospel music is something else. Do you see this? All this would have been prevented. Had you just liked and subscribed. <laughs> the only real gameplay related sin is the Marauder. Don't get me wrong, I do love his design, but he just feels like a great value Dark Souls mini boss unlike the other editions. If his movement was more fluid and the opportunity to attack was more than just a few frames, he'd fit right in and I'd love to see more demons like him in a potential future game. Just make him spawn the dog less, like seriously. So in a non-spoiler sense, should Christians be able to play Doom Eternal? Well, I'm not your mom. If violence, blood, and gore are not stumbling blocks for you, I'd say go for it. However, we do have spoilers to discuss, and those spoilers will be dropping in three, two, one, one, one. Just eight months after Doom Chapter 20 verse 16, demons straight up nene Earth, and it's up to the Doom Slayer to eliminate three hell priests before they consume all of Earth. And boy is a Slayer pissed, and will be even more rightfully so by the end of the game. While Hell is throwing even more than ever at you with some new highlights, such as the Doom Hunter, Dread Knight, Whiplash, Carcass, Gargoyle, the Archfile, and the Marauder are very nice, but the new mystery is the Con Maker and the constant mention of Erdak, which is where this church box will get interesting. Towards the beginning, you'll find someone known as Valen the Betrayer, who was a Night Sentinel just like you, except he had lost his son. Stricken with visions of his son being tortured, he attempted to make a deal with the Hell Priests, which obviously backfires. Idiot. The Betrayer obviously didn't get to read Leviticus 19.31, otherwise this wouldn't have happened. The Betrayer is annoyingly vague by referring to the fact that the Slayer must accept his people are essentially doomed, <laughs> and that his people must pay penance just like his people did. The Con Maker also becomes increasingly irritated by your crusade to kill the priests. But why would these so-called angels be protecting demons? Well, I, I know the answer, I'm just adding suspense. While the Slayer continues his rampage, he rampages so hard into a flashback and you get to hear the Doom Guy's voice for the first time. Guts. Huge guts. Must. Kill. Them all. That's right. In less of a twist and more of a confirmation, Doom Guy is the Doom Slayer, who, as a mortal, was voluntold to become a Night Sentinel for the planet Argent Dinner, Dinner. and for the Con Maker herself. You'll make a fine addition to the front line, stranger. We later on discover it was the Makers that used the demons as well as their energy source for their own gain. They were the ones that refined the essence energy from the well and turned it into Argent energy. Are the Makers a metaphor for American oil? There's also an achievement called called Interplanetary Fracking. Was Doom Eternal written by Al Gore? There are even Gornists in the game. How far does this conspiracy go? While infinite energy sounds nice, it starts to sound a little less nice when it uses tortured souls to create it, and the bodies of said tortured souls become the very demons you fight. The demons are pretty evil, but they really did find a pretty efficient energy source. 
You get to steal the energy from souls and then the corpses fight for you? Well, that sounds great and all, but the thing is, is that you got these guys in way too tight of boxes. Like, they're super overcrowded and they can't practice social distancing properly. So, I gotta take some points off for that. The Doomslayer, being literally too angry to die, makes his way to Erdak with the help of Samuel Hayden for a very civil discussion. Just kidding, everyone dies. The Doomslayer's first initiative is to kill the Icon of Sin before it gets resurrected, which doesn't exactly work out. And let me see what you have! I'm going! No! But strangely enough, when you enter the doorway, you are welcomed as Seraphim. As you continue to make your way through Urdak, the Slayer places Vega inside the Maker's systems. Vega then asks something interesting. But in the final showdown against the Con Maker, she reveals that the Makers have been exterminating other entire species to preserve themselves for thousands of years. How selfless of them! Some of you may die, but it's a sacrifice! I am willing to make. However, the fight isn't over yet, because you still have to deal with the Icon of Sin, which turns out was the son of the betrayer that was mentioned before. Guy can't even go out and attempt to save his son. SMH my head. The Icon of Sin is no longer a wall, but now a fully-fledged id Tech 7 character model with a full body and everything. You nene the Icon of Sin and save the day. For now. So for the story of Doom Eternal, there's a lot more to unpack than chapter 20 verse 16. And so you might be wondering, is it still okay for Christians to play even though you're killing angels as well as demons? And the answer is of course it is, because they're not really angels. Well on paper, it may seem like the game's direction is heading for the killing of angels and demons. But the thing is, the makers simply aren't biblical angels at all. There are certainly connections and references to the Bible, but the beings themselves are more reminiscent of the forerunners in Halo 4 and 5. And I believe this was all done on purpose. Even in the original games, the demons were more interdimensional creatures rather than being spiritual evils described in the Bible. The same goes for makers. They're just beings that think they're gods, therefore they're false gods. So rip and tear, baby. So what was the point of this church box? It's to have some fun with another game that comes off as Christian. And sure the game is very violent, has satanic imagery, and lacks Ikeas, the game is still really fun and I think it's okay for anyone to play. But I really hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope you guys like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Stay hashtag blessed.